Today we're going to be doing experiment number two. Uh, this experiment is going to look at two different things. First, we're going to look at how different pieces of glassware can measure volumes more or less accurately. So we're going to be comparing a 50 milliliter beaker, and these beakers are marked off in 10 milliliter increments, so they're not extremely accurate. We use those when the amount of liquid we are measuring is not that critical. We'll look also at a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. Now the graduated cylinder is marked off in individual milliliters, so we can do a much more accurate job. So if you need moderate accuracy, these graduated cylinders work very well. I'm adding something to the lab today, which is a burette. Burettes are marked off to the nearest tenth of a milliliter, so they are ten times more accurate than the graduated cylinder, which is ten times more accurate than the beaker. We'll be measuring volumes of liquids in each of these three, and then we'll determine how accurate each one actually is. The other part of the experiment has to do with uh, combining liquids. You might think if you took 20 milliliters of water and 20 milliliters of alcohol and mixed them together, you would get a volume of 40 milliliters. But that's not necessarily the case. So we're going to compare what happens when you mix two identical liquids together and then what happens when you mix two different liquids together. And you're going to find that the volumes aren't always what you would expect them to be. For our first experiment, we're going to measure out water in two 50 mil graduated cylinders. We're going to then record the volumes in each, combine them together, and then measure the combined volume to see if the combined volume is very close to the sum of the two individual. So we want to put between 15 and 20 milliliters of water in each one. All right, there's our first one. All right, now let's uh, take a moment and we'll measure those volumes and then we'll combine them and measure them again. This is the first graduated cylinder and water. Record the volume in your lab book. And this is the second cylinder in deionized water. Now that we've measured the individual volumes in each of the two graduated cylinders, let's go ahead and combine the two. And we'll try to pour all of the water. We want to try to get as much of the water as possible to reduce our error. And let's go ahead now and go back and measure the combined volume. Now record the combined volume and see how that compares to the value you get when you simply add the two volumes together. Now let's compare the 50 mil graduated cylinder and the 50 milliliter beaker. Since the beaker is only graduated in 10 milliliter increments, we'd expect to get less accuracy. We'll go ahead and add again between 15 and 20 milliliters of deionized water to our graduated cylinder, and then we'll do the same thing with our beaker. And now we'll go and measure each of these volumes and then combine them and do our final measurement. First, let's measure the volume of water in the graduated cylinder. Now do your best to estimate the volume of water in the 50 milliliter beaker.
Now that we've measured the individual volumes in the beaker and the graduated cylinder, let's go ahead and combine those two and see how accurate we were. Again, we'll try to get all of the water out of the beaker to reduce our error. And let's go back and measure our combined volume. Now go ahead and measure the combined volume and then you can compare that to the value you get by adding the individual volumes in the graduated cylinder and the beaker. Now we're going to repeat that first series using two different liquids. This time we'll be using deionized water and ethanol. When two different liquids are mixed together, the volumes are not commonly additive. Because the molecules are different sizes, they tend to fit in between each other, and usually you'll find that the volume of the two together will be less than the sum of the two individually. It's like mixing, say, ping pong balls and marbles together. When you mix those two together, the marbles sort of fit in between the spaces in the ping pong balls, and the total space is less than what it would be if you simply added them together in the first place. So let's go ahead and take two graduated cylinders. And in the first one, again, we'll put between 15 and 20 milliliters of deionized water. And then we'll fill the second one with between 15 and 20 milliliters of ethanol. Now let's go measure the volumes of these two and then we'll combine them and see what the final volume turns out to be. First we'll measure the volume of water. And now let's measure the volume of the ethanol. Now let's go ahead and combine the ethanol and water and let's see what the total volume turns out to be. Again, let's try to make sure we get all of it or as much as possible to reduce our error. All right, let's go back now and measure the combined volume. Now measure the combined volume and then you can compare that with the sum of the two individual volumes. We've done one experiment where we combined two volumes of water, the same liquid, and then in our second combination we used water and ethanol. So for the third, let's use ethanol and ethanol. Again, we'll collect between 15 and 20 milliliters of ethanol in each of these two graduated cylinders. There's one. All right, let's go ahead and measure the volumes in each of those two cylinders and then we'll combine them as we did before and determine the final volume. Measure the volume in the first cylinder of ethanol and record that value in your lab book. And now measure the volume of ethanol in the second cylinder. We've measured the volumes of the two ethanol samples in the cylinders, so now we're going to combine them together and see if the final volume comes out to be the same as the sum of those two. Again, let's try to get all of the ethanol out of there that we can. All right, let's go ahead and go back and measure the final volume. 
measure the final volume of the ethanol and then compare that to the sum of the two individual volumes from the original two graduated cylinders. As I mentioned at the beginning of the experiment, I've decided to add something additional here to give us a better idea of the accuracy of our beaker, our graduated cylinder, and the burette. What I've decided to do is I'm going to add 23.4 milliliters of water from the burette. And then I'm going to try my best to measure out 23.4 milliliters in each of these containers. An easy way to determine the accuracy of these is simply to weigh them. We know the density of water at 20 degrees Celsius is almost exactly one. It's 0.9982 grams per milliliter, so it's easy to determine that 23.4 milliliters of water should weigh about 23.36 grams. So we'll see how close each of these three comes to that mass of 23.36 grams. I think you probably have an idea already which of these is going to be the most accurate and which is the least, but let's go ahead and try it. So the first thing we'll need to do is to go weigh the three. We're going to weigh the graduated cylinder before we add the water. We'll add this beaker before we add water. And then we're going to use this beaker to collect the water from the burette because it's pretty difficult to weigh the burette before and after. It doesn't lay on a balance very well. So we'll simply add the water to a beaker and we'll weigh that. So let's go take those initial masses and then we'll come back and measure out the water. Before we add the water to each of our containers, we need to get an initial mass. So let's start out with the beaker that we're going to put the water directly into. Looks like that's going to be about 29.51 grams. Now let's go ahead and measure the mass of the graduated cylinder. 48.68 grams. And finally, let's measure the mass of the beaker that we're going to collect the water sample from the burette. And that appears to be about 29.18 grams. So now let's take these back and go ahead and add the water. All right, we've recorded the masses of the uh, two beakers and the graduated cylinder. So now let's go ahead and add, as accurately as we can, 23.4 milliliters. That'll be a bit of a challenge with our beaker because it's only marked every 10. So we've got to go somewhere between the 10 and the 20 mark here. Or sorry, the 20 and the 30 mark. So we'll try to estimate approximately where 23.4 would be. That looks about right. It'll be easier in the graduated cylinder because they're marked off in individual milliliters. So we'll be able to estimate more accurately between the 23 mark on the cylinder and the 24 mark. So there's 20, 21, 22, 23, that looks like about 23.4. And then finally, we'll use our burette, which is marked off to the nearest tenth of a milliliter, so we should be able to hit the 23.4 very accurately. So we're starting at the zero mark, so we'll run it down till we reach 23.4. So we'll go ahead and open that up pretty wide there. It'll take a moment or so. There's four milliliters, so it's coming along pretty quickly. When it gets close to the end, we'll slow down and add it one drop at a time to try to get as close to that 23.4 mark as we can. So we're about halfway there now. And now there's 14, 15, 
All right, we've reached the 20 mark, so we're going to slow down in a moment here. All right, that's 23, so we're going to set this now to just let a drop at a time in till we get to 23.4. So there's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and there's 23.4. Let's go ahead and take our three containers now and weigh them with the water, and then we'll subtract those initial masses and see how close each of these came to the 23.36 grams that that amount of water should weigh. Now let's measure the masses of water in each of our three containers. Let's begin with the beaker that we measure the water directly into, and that appears to be about 51.47 grams. Next, let's take the graduated cylinder and measure its final mass and that is 71.92 grams. And then finally, we'll measure the water we collected from the burette, and that comes out to be 52.54 grams. So now you can subtract these final masses from the initial for each of our three measuring devices and determine which was the most accurate and which was the least accurate.